Speaking of balance and stuff, Esteban put out a video today. It's time to explore some of the worst matchups in all of fighting games. The YouTube comments are really bad. It's people picking random 5-5 matchups and saying it's unwinnable because they suck. Yeah, the idea is like, this sucks, I can't win, wins the patch, right? A lot of people, they're not looking to find a long-term solution. They're looking for a short-term solution that's hopefully easier. I wanted to check it out. I have not seen it yet. I don't know actually like what, what the examples are in the video. People bring up Injustice, right? Yeah, Injustice is a good example, but there's a lot of really... There's some really bad matchups that have been in fighting games within the last even 10 years. It's not hard to go back and find some shit that's just truly incredibly fucked up. As defined in the fighting game glossary, a matchup is the strategy and game knowledge that applies for one specific character against another specific character, and are often measured by stating how many games out of 10 a character should win if two high-level players of equal skill played against each other, ranging from the even 5-5 matchup to a more difficult 7-3. I don't know if a lot of people know that. When people say matches are 5-5, five, five, right? What they mean is if two players of equal skill and equal knowledge played against each other in a matchup, generally they'll go even. The matchups that hide under your bed, the ones with broken hitboxes, oppressive zoning, and infinite pain, the 8-2s and 9-1s that keep you up for days. The Zod matchup's a good example. What of the unfathomable horror and terror that is the dreaded Ted? Oh. <laughs> there was a 10-0 matchup in KI. I don't know if it's going to be in this video or pretty close to 10. It's like 9-1. It's pretty bad. I can think of a few in other games too. We'll get through it. Vanilla Street Fighter 4, Zangief versus Seth. <laughs> yeah. As the final boss of Street Fighter 4, this, this matchup was really fucked up. Seth cannons to a knife fight. Just look at what Seth had in Vanilla Street Fighter 4. Projectiles, teleports, a wall jump, a reversal uppercut, a goddamn sniper rifle and just really good mobility. This character was built to destroy grapplers like Zangief. With amazing space control and keep away options, Zangief just doesn't get many opportunities to start his offense. And even when he can get inside, Seth has so many ways to escape with his teleports, DP FADC, or even a reversal SPD of his own. This shit's fucked up. Have you ever watched what Sniper looks like in this matchup? You know, there's like the, the fighting game video that's like my worst wa losses ever. And it's like Ultra David talking about playing online Tony and how he got like triple perfected. And then the game he didn't get perfected, he got one hit of chip against online Tony and Seth versus Zangief. He literally did not play the game. Like he just, he, you actually just die. If you hit Seth, he actually just dies in one hit, but it doesn't matter. That's actually how fucked up it is. It still does not matter. Injustice one, Zod versus Lex. Yeah, you, you just look at it. Air and give him your oh, energy. That's it. That's that's awesome. it. The commentators are saying that's it. Do you hear this? The commentators are saying that's it. I've showed this on stream many times. He started with round star chest bump move, right? Which is like a very fast advancing mid that's unsafe. And it's like a combo move, but also you can use it in neutral to surprise people. So he starts the round with it because he's like, oh, let me try to get in. And then it's blocked and punished. And now they're saying, oh, the match is over. Game's over. That was so bossy. The game is over. Oh. It's over. On a scale of balls. Here it comes. Doom. 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 His Kryptonian rifle is perfect for keeping Lex away. And its meter burn versions cover most of the angles Lex needs to use on approach. It certainly doesn't help that Zai can also summon a ray from the Phantom Zone to keep Lex pinned down. This is his trait. And when he summons his trait, he just mashes the trait button. And you're stuck in block stun the whole time. And while you're stuck in block stun, Zod can just do whatever he wants. He has an overhead from the trait that will grab you and lead to a full combo. And his laser full screen is a low. You saw when he was doing the instant air uh, Zod balls. He has to duck, walk, duck, walk, duck, walk to get in, right? But if he meter burns it, then it's an overhead and it hits you fast. So you can't like duck, walk forward. You have to duck and then walk and then block and then gain no space. And it could just happen at any time. Or uses eye beams to push Lex near full screen. Even and there's a lot of chip too. And then you got to deal with this close. again. This matchup is really bad. Like it is incredibly difficult to win in neutral. It's very hard. And I don't think any Zod player really even had to think about the matchup too much. My memory of this matchup is just incredibly how miserable it was. It was really bad. Okay, sure. The matchups we've talked about so far aren't exactly unwinnable. But these next few that we're going to talk about, these next few are f shit. Yeah. Jackie Chan's Fist of Fire, Thorsten versus Kim Marie. Thorsten is regarded as one of the more powerful characters in Jackie Chan's Fist of Fire with many pointing to things such as his fast back dash, amazing pokes, and great damage output as some of his key strengths. 
One of the more powerful tools in his arsenal, however, are his full screen, almost fully invincible teleport. I've never They're seen this. They're incredibly fast and give Thorsten access to a nightmarish keep away game, especially against a character like Kim Marie. What who is to stay this? Close to her opponent to be effective. All Thorsten needs to do in this matchup is to get and maintain a life lead and then teleport his way to a timeout victory. Oh, word. Is it just the KI? It's just the same. It's the same as the, the other, the matchup I was going to talk about, word. X-Men Next Dimension, Sabretooth versus Gambit. As a grappler in X-Men Next Dimension, Sabretooth has access to a few chain throws, one of which being his air throw. However, there's a wild glitch where Sabretooth can input the command for his air chain throw anywhere on the screen, and it will actually teleport their opponent into the grab animation. Excuse me? And since this attack knocks down your opponent for so long, he can just chain this forever, giving him a full screen infinite. Huh? What makes this so bad for Gambit- I thought that was a camera cut. I didn't realize that was it comboing over and over. For some reason, he's the only character in the game that loses the ability to do anything before rounds two and three giving Sabretooth enough time to launch Gambit into his chain grab infinite. Welcome to 10-0 hell. King of Fighters 95, Yori versus Chin. This last one is a bit situational. In KOF 95's Italy stage, the first member of each team starts the match by jumping off a small bridge. But then here comes Chin. Does he just not Chin go down? Chin is notably shorter than most characters in the game. And as the first character in any fight on the Italy stage, he lands later than the rest of the cast. And some of you can see where I'm going with this. So unfortunately for him, this can happen. Go! <laughs> <laughs> that is so tight. Bruh. For some reason, the game doesn't actually wait for both characters to hit the ground before starting the round. And since this intro leaves him airborne, he can't block, he can't do anything. So someone like Yori, who has a far-reaching Rekka that can lead into infinites, can end his day before it even gets started. No way, he's just dead, huh? This is a good little collection of the kinds of shit that you're just like, well... It's especially funny because the first two are not, like... You know, they're from the last Street Fighter game and then from Injustice 1. Yeah, so the KI one I was going to mention was a lot like the Power Rangers one. And in film, it's talked about it before, but it's just, it's still a bad matchup. But on release, Shin Hisako would just get chip against General Ram and then backdash full screen and teleport over and over until the game ended. Ram's trying to chase her and he's like big and slow and he can't get near. And then she goes whoop and then teleports to the opposite end of the other screen and backdash, 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 back. And then, you know, that's what you would do. How did they fix it? I mean, the general game plan in that matchup is not that different, actually, in the sense that her backdash and teleport and projectile seal that she can still use is there. It's just not as good as escaping as it used to be. There's some nasty stuff out there in fighting games. Honestly, like, I think a lot of people really overestimate. Like, I wonder how many in modern games, especially, I, I don't know how many seven threes exist. When you start to get the matchups that are like, 8-2 and like 9-1, it starts to just be like, this character literally does this option and there's like no answer. People these days are like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna win. This matchup's impossible, I have no chance. And then there's just like a 6-4 and you're like, okay, well. I want you to understand, you you can win a 7-3 matchup. I don't know if you know that, the three is there for a reason. I think it's not unlikely that Gold Lewis loses to uh, Axel worse than 6-4. I don't know the actual number, but it could happen. I don't even, I, I think maybe even Axel Pot could be 7-3. The thing I've seen Axel players do lately is jump S, jump H. Have you seen that? You do jump S and then if you input jump H, it's a Gatling after, right? If he tries to armor through with hammer fall or like do something forward advancing, the H will come out and hit the hammer fall. And you can do jump S, jump H, jump S, jump H. And if you ever hammer fall or try to armor through, the H breaks the armor and then he does bomber. Yeah, you say X, Y, Z, Z, Y versus Fab. There's footage of it. Let's look. Jump S, jump H, jump S, jump H. For Asmodi, what up? See how he had to stop the hammer fall earlier? Jump S. This is what you do. Jump S, jump H. Jump S, jump S, or that's jump P. Jump S, jump H. It looks pretty bad. But again, he can win in one hit. That's, you know, that's the, the factor here. That's scary, right? This is fun. It seems very fun for Fab. You know, nice armor. 
Oh. Uh, yeah, that's how the matchup looks. The thing is, is like, if obviously, if he hits him once, he could die. But the neutral, I mean, it's miserable. That's just the design of the, the matchup. It's the design of the characters. Anyway, you guys should go subscribe and support Esteban if you guys don't already. I am a proud patron for some money that's more than I meant to do, and I never changed it. Listen, I received a package today. Looky looky for passing the big 100k. I didn't realize this was coming so soon. It's a pretty wild thing to happen, right? Especially because my channel, there's a certain style of content that I really like making. And I think it's probably not the easiest to like grab people, but a lot of people love the shit I make, which is really awesome. I've been making content and putting it out for fighting games for like 11 years or something. You know, my big thing I'm going to do for hitting 100k absolutely nothing i'm just gonna keep making new shit that's nothing has changed for screw but what up i get i get to hang this thing up i guess